Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I will be showing you how the Fruity Parametric EQ2 works in FL Studio. So what this plugin is, is it's an equalization plugin, which allows you to change the volume of different frequency ranges on the input signal. So right now, uh, my input signal is just this bass sound. And you can see if I sweep this across the frequency spectrum, it will boost various frequencies. So you can see here at the bottom, you have a few different numbers here. Starting at 20, then 50, 100, and up to you know, 2,000, 5,000, and 10,000. And what these numbers represent are the frequency you are at. So, if I'm way over here, I'd be at 20 hertz, and if I'm right here, I'd be at 10,000 hertz, and if I go all the way to the right, I'm at 20,000 hertz. And if you want to get an exact reading of where you are, you can look up at the tips bar, and it'll show you. So right now you can see I am at 140 hertz, 632, 11,279, and so on. And you can see at the top you have the octaves and then a few different names for that frequency range. But the most important thing to know is the actual frequencies. And what this graph also does is it monitors the input. So you'll see when I play the sound, You can see all these orange and blue and purple kind of lines going on in this box. And you know, you'll notice that it's the same as my spectrum graph over here because you know, it is the same format. So you'll see over here I have 20 hertz, 50 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. The same as in here. This one's just sideways. So you can see what's coming into the Fruity Parametric EQ2, but how do you change what comes out of it? And this you do by adjusting different parameters on each of these bands. So you'll see you have seven bands in total, and they can be adjusted by you know just clicking on them and moving them around, or you can come over here. And all of the controls that you can change here can also be changed in the EQ shape itself. So you can see if I click this and drag it up, it is adjusting the band level of band 4. And if I take it down, it takes it down. And again, if you want to know how much you are changing the level by, you can look up here and you'll see that you know, it's at 0.8 decibels, 3.5 decibels, 7.2 decibels, and then all the way up to 18 decibels. Or I can go minus to reduce the volume at that frequency range. Now if I move it to the left and to the right, I'm changing the frequency, as I mentioned before. And that's what this, this knob here does. Now I can change the bandwidth by adjusting this knob here. And that just changes how small of a frequency range this band adjusts. So if I go to the left, it'll be a lot wider. And if I go to the right, it'll be a lot narrower. And I can change it from the band's token itself by using the mouse wheel, scrolling up to make it wider and scrolling down to make it more narrow. And you can also change the order of the band uh, by clicking this little square here and dragging down or up. And 
you can see it just changes the shape of the curve. And you can select that from the token itself by right clicking and then choosing the order. You have the steep 8, uh, the steep 6, steep 4, and then the gentle 8, 6, and 4, or the default 2. And the last option you have for each band is the band type. And this allows you to select different kinds of filters that the band will act as. So by default, this one is a peaking band, but I can change it. Uh, let's start from the top. I have a high shelf, and you can see that just boosts all of the frequencies beyond a selected frequency. And so you can boost all those frequencies or reduce them. Again, you can you know, click and drag to change between them, or you can right click to select the type. And so that's the high shelf. You've already seen the peaking. And there's the low shelf, which is the opposite of the high shelf. It will boost or reduce any frequencies that are below a selected point. And then you have your band stop, which if you're over here in the tips bar, it'll call it a notch filter. So I'm not sure why they used two different terms for the same thing, but the, both terms mean the same thing. So, And what that does is it just cuts out the selected frequency entirely. And, you know, changing the bandwidth and order can affect how that works quite a bit. And you also have your high pass filter, which will cut off any low frequencies beyond a certain point. And you can have it be really steep. Or you can have it be more gentle uh, just by adjusting the order. And then you also have the band pass, which is the opposite of the band stop. It will only allow selected frequencies through. And then you have your low pass, which will just cut out all the high frequencies above a selected point. And finally, you have the disabled. And that'll just turn that band off so it does nothing. Now, from right-clicking bands, you also have the option to reset them, which just puts them back to their default settings. Except I don't believe that it changes the filter type or the order. So, let's see that. No, it only resets the frequency and the bandwidth. Now, you have one more slider over here. And what this does is it changes the volume of all frequencies evenly. So you can hear if I adjust this. It gets louder and softer. And the way you can change that over here is by clicking anywhere that isn't on a token and just dragging. You can also scroll your mouse wheel. Now, what if you want to make you know, more subtle adjustments while you're changing your sound? Uh, what you can do is, you know, while you're adjusting any parameter, whether it's 
this knob here, or the token itself, you can hold control and you know, it'll give you a lot more fine control over what's happening. So right now I'm rotating my hand. I'm going to keep it rotating the same speed. But now I'm going to press control right now. And now I'll release it. So you can see it you know, gives you a lot of fine control. So if you need to make a really precise cut or boost or whatever, you know, that's the way you can do it. And so what you want to do is you want to use all these bands to you know, shape your individual sounds so that they sound good while they play along with other sounds. Uh, but I'm not going to cover you know, how to mix or anything in this video. I will be doing that in the future. So if you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe and you know, I'll do a full series on mixing. But for now, I just have a few more things to cover in Parametric EQ 2. So you have a few more options down here. And I'm going to start from the right. So first off, you have this compare section here. And the right button is flip with spare state. And the left one is store in spare state. So what this does is, you know, if you've EQ'd your sound a certain way, and you want to make an adjustment, but you're not sure that you want to keep it, you can you, know, you can click this one button here, the downward arrow, to store it in the spare state. And you know you can make any adjustments. And then you can come back and click this button here, the one that has two arrows, to go back to it. You know, so you can quickly compare the adjustments you've made and decide which one you want to keep. And so basically what that does is allows you to have two different EQ curves that you can constantly adjust and you know switch between to see which one is better. Okay. Now here you have your monitor options, and this button monitors the output. So you'll see if I cut off the high frequencies, it'll show that they have been cut off. But if I monitor the input, you know, it's monitoring the input so it doesn't get um, the information that those frequencies have been cut off afterwards. And then you can also turn the monitoring off if you want to just use your ears. And some people might recommend that, some people might prefer that, because it allows you to focus on the sound entirely and not get distracted by your eyes. But, you know, do whatever feels best to you. Now this button here uh, is the View Band Tokens button. So when it's on, it'll show you you know, one, two, three, four, and they'll be nicely sized. But if I turn it off, then they go away, and all you have are these little dots. But you can still right click to, you know, do all the same stuff. Uh, so, you know, if you prefer to have a cleaner curve where you see just the curve, you can turn them off. Or if you like to have the tokens there, you can turn it on. Now the HQ button toggles whether or not the output is high quality. And what that means is whether or not it's oversampling. So if you turn it off, you will have the oversampling off and you will save CPU. And if you have it on, you'll turn the oversampling on and you'll get a higher quality. Um, you'll prevent certain artifacts from occurring if you're editing the high end in particular. Uh, but it will use more CPU. So if you don't have the best computer, you know, you might want to work with uh, the high quality off just to save your resources. Okay, and finally you have the high precision monitor. And what this does is it makes this graph monitor the sound, you know, um, with high precision. 
uh, but it's at the cost of a lot of latency. Not of the sound, but of the image. So right now it's off and I'll show you, I'll just play sound. Now I'll turn it on. See, there isn't any delay on the sound, but on the input of the graph here. You know, it's monitoring a lot more slowly. And I personally don't think that's all that necessary because it's not the easiest thing to see anyway. You might as well you know, put on, uh, this is wave candy to monitor that way. Okay, so that's the 3D Parametric EQ2. Thanks for watching my tutorial video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch new videos as soon as I upload them. After that, check out the Beat School website. I'll have the link in the description. All my tutorials are organized on the site so that you can easily find what you need by browsing through the different categories. There are also a ton of awesome resources to help you in every aspect of music production. And if you want to help support me, you can buy any of my sample packs, preset packs, or project files for only $5 or less. This gets you some great sounds for a great price and allows me to spend more time making these tutorials and working on the website. Thanks again for watching my video and have a great day.